Hello, my name is Alex and today we're going to be doing a follow-up tutorial on how exactly I set my voltage curve when undervolting with the uh, AMD Radeon software here. This applies to the RX 570 and the RX 580 video cards. It'll also work with the 400 series of cards, uh, but your voltages will vary quite a bit there. Anyways, I've opened up my AMD Radeon software. I navigated to the performance, tuning option, and then of course manual and unchecked all these. That's how I got here. So now you can see my base default uh, core clock is as well as just the uh, the core clock uh, curve, I guess, between state zero and state seven. As well, it shows me the voltages that are set for, of course, again, state zero all the way to state seven. Now, the main state that your system is going to be running in while you're in games is generally going to be state seven. That means when your video card's at 100% GPU utilization, you're going to be running at the max core clock. Now. Undervolting is basically finding an optimal voltage to run at the given core clock that you want to run at. So in this case here, I know that the stock voltage of 1150 millivolts is a lot higher is a lot higher than what is actually required to run at 1140 megahertz. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower my voltage a bit. So let's say I want to test 1100 millivolts on the uh, core clock here to see if this is stable. Um, and then what I do is I first set my state 7 voltage as the one I want to test, then I lower the remaining state 6, 5, 4, and 3 all the way down to state 3 by only 10 millivolts. This is very important, this is kind of my thought process of how I set my voltages on the remaining states. Um, so you can see here I've lowered the voltages, so I want to test 1100 millivolts on the core. Uh, at uh, 1340 megahertz and then the remaining voltages I just drop by 10 millivolts because quick this is kind of my approach I look at state 7 as my main state that I'll be running my game in however state 6, 5, 4, 3 and 2 basically those are the what I would like to call transfer states so for example when you're in loading screen your GPU is not at 100% usage it's going to be fluctuating in one of these transfer states here but the reason I want to still have a relatively high voltage in state 6, 5, 4 and 3 is because when it fluctuates really fast between like the loading menu into game I found sometimes my game would crash if I still applied the same undervolting principle to state 6, 5, 4 and 3 so in this case here you just want to optimize your state 7 voltage and then reduce the other voltages just by 10 millivolts so you can see here and the other voltages that I'm talking about are state 6, 5, 4, and 3. So I went from 1090, 1080, 1070, and 1060 there. Then all I do is I hit apply changes and I load up the game that I want to test or a, an application that will stress test the settings here. So if I open up Call of Duty Warzone and it runs stable, then I know that these settings are stable. So now let's say you want to optimize your card even more. So you're going to lower your voltage. Let's say you're like, well, I want to I want to be risky. I want to try an even lower voltage. So I'm going to try 1060 millivolts at 1340 megahertz. And I'm, of course, just using my core clocks as an example. But the thing that can consider and always keep in mind is that your core clocks are not they're not set in stone you can edit these that's why I always laugh when someone's like oh you got an Asus RX 570 oh you got a gigabyte RX 570 oh well mine has better clocks than yours and I'm like not exactly all this stuff is editable which means you can overclock you can undervolt there's a lot of things you can change here but anyways going along with the example let's say I want to undervolt my card more because my card ran stable at 1100 millivolts so now I want to lower my state 7 voltage even more and kind of find the limits of what is at what is 1340 megahertz actually stable at of course I'm not doing the test here but this is something you'll have to test yourself and again all silicon quality is different what works for me may not work for you but I just want to show you my approach my thought process of how I set my voltages for the remaining states besides state 7 so let's say I set I set state 7 at 1060 millivolts I'm going to apply the same principle I'm going to lower down to 1050 1040 that's one too many zeros there, so I'm going to reduce it down to 1040, 1030, and you guys should get the idea here. This is how I set my voltage curve. I set my state 7 as the one that's stable, and then I just reduce the others by 10 millivolts. Of course, hit apply changes. Now, two things. If you want this to apply to your game and have it load up every time, like have these settings apply every time you load your game up, you need to add a game profile. So all I do here in the top right, I select add a game profile, select the game I want to run, 
Warzone. Let's say it's Call of Duty Warzone because this is an infamous for running your system really hard. So I'm going to open this up here, add game profile, and now it gives me the same option to adjust my core clock as well as my core voltages. You can see it just copied those settings I was using in the global tuning option, uh, but now I have the... Uh, the game profile set up for Modern Warfare, Call of Duty here. And now every time I load Call of Duty, these settings will apply. Now let's say that my video card is running really hot even when undervolted like this. Your only other option now is to either, of course, you can change your thermal paste in your video card or reduce your state 7 core clock yes reducing clock speed will reduce performance but i always look at it as a trade-off what would you rather have a hot video card or a maybe like three percent lower fps like really there's not a big difference between like let's say 1340 megahertz and 1280 megahertz so let's say i want a lower core voltage i'm going to reduce my core clock because Remember, undervolting or basically overclocking or any anything you want to call, it's all about finding a balance between core voltage and core clock. So it's finding the balance which is important. It's not so much what it's called, undervolting or overclocking. It's always about finding what clock speed will run at what stable voltage. And that's what you have to test out for yourself at home. So of course here I'm just going to lower my uh, clock speeds a bit. And now of course I can adjust my voltages again. So let's see, maybe... Maybe I have good silicon quality and I can run 990 millivolts at 1280 megahertz. So now I can go with the uh, settings here and follow my same principle of I set my state 7 voltage and then I reduce by 10 millivolts each time here. And then I just apply all these. And then when I hit apply changes, these changes are now going to be applied to my Call of Duty Modern Warfare game profile. So which means if I open a game like Apex Legends, these will not be applied. I have to go in individually for each application I want to run and add the given game profile, edit your settings, and each time one of those applications open, then these settings will apply. Now, when testing, I do recommend you have a program called MSI Afterburner installed and where you set up, where well, you can just follow me here quickly, where you set up monitoring uh, for your C for your GPU temperature, your GPU usage, as well as your core clock and uh, GPU voltage. So you can see in the top left here, I can see my GPU temperature, 44 degrees Celsius. Uh, I'm not under much load, so it's pretty much zero to four. It's going to fluctuate a bit. It shows me the core clock that I'm running at. 600 mil megahertz so i know okay my card's in state one right there um, and then of course it shows me what voltages it's running at and one thing i'm going to make note of here is that and something that you may find for yourself when you are stress testing your game with these undervolt settings is that your game may run at 15 to 30 millivolts lower than what you actually set in state 7 and that's an important thing to make note of because that means like let's say my game runs stable with these settings at 990 millivolts but when I load my game and I'm looking in MSI Afterburner it may show me that I'm only running at 900 and 75 millivolts or 976 millivolts so it's always important to have a monitoring application it's either you have the overlay set up or if you have dual monitors you just put it to your second monitor and just obviously have your uh, unlock voltage monitoring enabled so that you can actually see live what voltages you're actually running at so that you can get more accurate results which will allow you to make better uh, adjustments if your system does crash and on the point of system crashing which will happen for sure when you are testing your uh, voltages here um, what's going to happen is let's say I set way too low of a voltage like uh, 900 millivolts for 1280 and I hit apply what's going to happen is your system will freeze which means you're not gonna be able to do anything the only way to get around this is to hard power off your system by holding the power button for like five to six seconds completely shutting off and then rebooting your system now some people are concerned that this will crash windows from my experience as long as you only have like as long as you have no updates going on in the background and all you have open are the AMD drivers maybe MSI afterburner and uh, whatever application you're testing as long as you just have those basic applications and again there's no updates happening your system will boot up fine no problem all you do is once uh, like let's say it didn't work and it crashed all you do is you navigate um, from the home to performance tab to tuning and you select your game profile which you select in the top left here so we were at global tunings where we started but for call of duty warzone let's say it crashed while playing call of duty i come back in here and now i can make appropriate 
voltage adjustments before maybe 990 wasn't stable maybe i have to bump it up to 1020 and now you can see i set the same voltage curve that i like to use i start with again state 7 as my main voltage and then i drop the remaining state 6 5 4 and 3 by 10 millivolts so the 990 here and then for state 3 i'm going to put 980 because again transfer states i think are really important you have to have a decent voltage for that um, and then, of course, you just hit apply changes. You load your game up. Make sure you have MSI Afterburner open. Have that overlay that shows you your voltage. And then you can get a solid idea of like, oh, if this is stable, then you can just save this, leave this as B, and you're all set to go. Now, one thing that will also affect temperature with your video card is your fan. Uh, your fan speed and your fan profile. You can either adjust that here uh, within the AMD drivers, which it's also really handy. You can set up just for Call of Duty Modern Warfare. You can set different custom fan profiles. So you can see here, okay, if I want my fan speed at 50% at uh, 50 degrees, I just drop it here. And then I'm like, okay, 85 degrees is kind of hot. So I'm going to put 100% uh, fan speed at around 80. And you just set a fan curve like this. Some people like to use the AMD drivers to set a fan curve. I personally, again, like to use MSI Afterburner. I find it really simple. Um, all I do is I go to settings, fan, enable user divine, uh, whatever, automatic fan control. And then it's super intuitive. You just drag and drop what fan speeds you want to run at a given uh, temperature. You just hit apply. And uh, that, so the two things between undervolting, basically optimizing your voltage for the given core clock that you're running at, between optimizing your core clock and voltage and your fan curve, you should get a really nice sweet spot of performance, temperatures, and acoustics. And all those three uh, all go together because, of course, if you want lower acoustics, you're going to need lower temperatures, which means you're going to need lower core clock or lower voltages. And uh, yeah, I'm going to end the tutorial there. Hopefully, uh, you guys learned something just from me ranting on from my experience here. I know this can be pretty complicated, and if you haven't ever played with this, it can be a little bit overwhelming to work with. Um, all I can really say is this is how I learned. I learned from trial and error. Like, I, I tested many, many times to find something that was stable for my system. And kind of as I mentioned earlier in the video, not all video cards are the same. Some may require a much higher voltage than others. Some won't have as good silicon quality as others. But as long as you apply the same principle of, okay, I tested these voltages, so let's say I test uh, 1060 and I lower the uh, remaining state 6, 5, 4, and 3 voltages by 10 millivolts, as I showed in my video here. As long as I follow those same principles, and if my system crashes, I know, okay, it's either my core, like we know, okay, let me step back a second. If your system crashes, there's two things that, well, there's one thing that affects it. It means that the voltage for the given core clock is not stable. So you have two options, either reduce your core clock so it runs stable at the voltage you set or increase your voltage. And the way I look at it is if your system's running, if your card's running cool under load, so let's say it's at 70 degrees and you don't mind it running at 74 degrees, then you can bump up your voltage a bit. But let's say you're already running at 78 degrees Celsius, then what you'll want to do is reduce your core clock so that you can run at that same voltage. And remember, it's just a balance. Voltage and core clock, they go hand in hand. If one's not stable, uh, then you have to adjust the other. Or anyways, yeah, I'm going to end the recording there. I'm just rambling on here. Hopefully this did help you. If it did, please do leave a like on the video as well. If you want to see more technical kind of tutorials, you can request them in the comment section below. And the only way you'll know if they come out is if you do subscribe to my YouTube channel here. We're so close to a thousand subscribers now and hopefully i'll be making more of these technical guides for you out there and uh, yes it's not edited but i didn't edit it because i wanted to show you my whole process of how i went through this um yeah if you have any questions you can definitely reach out in the comment section below if this did help you please let me know as well in the comment section below because i read all my comments i don't just ask you just to have comments there i do read them all you can look at the videos that i made a year ago i respond to all my comments i do my best to at least acknowledge them because uh, i do appreciate if you do take your time to look at my video and actually see if you can learn something from what i've learned so i can pass it along to someone else but uh, yeah i'm gonna be ending the recording there hopefully this did help you and i wish you the best when undervolting your video card and remember like i didn't learn this overnight you're probably not going to learn it overnight either it's just try get results take the results and make adjustments and anyways good luck with your on the volting take care